welcome back. Let's cover our first example of command injection. And as usual, we're going to start off with an easy example first. This example will be the one from our Try Hack Me OWASP top 10 lab. So we already ran that virtual machine once we covered the HTML injection, and we want to do the same thing again. We want to run the virtual machine used to perform command injection in the lab that we covered inside of the Try Hack Me platform. Now, since we already ran it once, I'm going to go through the process of running those virtual machines and setting up VPN one more time, just so we can refresh our memory. So the first thing that we want to do once we open our Try Hack Me account is we want to make sure that Burp suit is started and that intercept is turned off. And then we want to run our VPN file. Remember, we downloaded it in the home and then our account and in the downloads directory. And all we have to do to run it is type sudo openvpn and then the file name. Enter your password and it will start the VPN for you. Now, if you open another terminal and type in ifconfig command, you should be able to see another interface right here that will give you the IPv4 address that will belong to the TryHackMe network. Okay, awesome. Once you got that set up, you want to navigate to your dashboard, navigate to the Learn tab, scroll all the way down till we find our modules, which are right here, select Web Hacking Fundamentals, and under here, we want to go with OWASP top 10. Okay, awesome. As we can see, we are connected to their network. Here is our IP address. As it says even here that we are connected via OpenVPN. So everything is set up good. Now, if you don't connect from the first try, just try to restart both of your OpenVPN and your Try Hack Me platform. Just refresh it after you start your VPN again and it should work perfectly. Now, once we navigate right here, we want to go to the task 4 and task 5. Both of these are command injection. Just this one is only theory. It allows you to read something about it. You can go through all of this if you want to. I do advise you to read it. And you can also read examples of command injection right here under the task 5. But we're not going to be reading this at the moment. What we want to do is we want to start the machine. As we remember, it will take around one minute for our IP address of our vulnerable virtual machine to appear right here. So let's wait for that. And by the way, after we finish showing the command ejection, in the next video, we're also going to try to do these tasks or do these challenges right here. These are something like capture the flag challenges. So it will ask us to find something and we will try to do it with the help of command injection. But for now, on, let's just get command injection to work. So let's wait once again for IP address to show. And here is my IP address. I'm going to copy it. And the first thing that I always do, which I already mentioned, is I try to ping the IP address. In case you get a response like this where it is not able to ping it, Make sure that you wait for a minute or two and then you should be able to ping it since it does take some time for the machine to set up. So let's control C this, wait a couple more seconds and then we will try again. Let's give it a try again and if I ping it, now we do get the response. Okay, awesome. Let's go back here and in our challenge, as we already saw previously, we do get this link right here. So this link is what we're going to use to try to perform command injection. Let's click on it and it should open a page called evilshell.php on our target's IP address. And here we get a simple web application. It only has this one input that allows us to enter a single command. And if I type something like test, well, nothing will appear. But what would happen if I type something like test and then semicolon to separate the commands and type ls, which is the command to list all the available files in the directory. If I click on submit, now we get a response. We get all the files that are currently in this web server's directory. So this input right here is vulnerable to the command injection. 
you can do this with any command that you want. You can type test and then semicolon and then for example, who am I? And it will tell you which account is it running as. Currently it's running as www-data. So command objection works in this input. But there's one more thing that I didn't really tell you. Besides the command injection that reflects the output on the page, there is also something called blind injection or blind command injection. What does that mean? Well, it means that we can't see the output of our command on the page, even though it might be vulnerable to the command injection. Okay, but you might be wondering, well, how can I then know if it's vulnerable if I can't see any output on the page? Well, we have to approach it differently. Now, let's imagine that this same page doesn't give us any output. Let's imagine that once we type test and then semicolon and then space and ls, it doesn't print anything right here. If you didn't know about blind command injection, you would probably think that it's not vulnerable. But there is another test that we can perform. We can try to perhaps ping our Cal Linux machine from our target machine. It won't give us any output here, but if we try to intercept the requests using something like a Wireshark, then maybe we can see the packets that the target machine is sending in order to ping us. If we do see those packets, that means we have a blind SQL injection. Let me show you what I mean. So first thing, we're going to open a program called Wireshark that is used to sniff packets and data over certain interfaces. We do ideally want to open it with sudo, just so we don't have any limitations. So just type sudo Wireshark and then type in your password. It will open this user interface program where we are going to try to sniff our packets once we run the ping command. So you will open a window that looks something like this. And you will have multiple interfaces right here. Ideally, we want to select the interface that we use with our VPN. And once again, you can figure out which interface that is by typing I've config. And for me, this is TUN0 interface. It has the IP address that belongs to the TriHackMe network. So I'm going to select that one right here. And here it's going to sniff for all the packets that are coming to that interface. Now, in order to discover this blind command injection, what we can do is we can type test and then ping our IP address. So to check out what IP address we have, we can copy it from our ifconfig output right here and we can paste it here. But before we run it, we want to be specifically sniffing for ping requests inside of our Wireshark. And those packets are also called ICMP packets. So you can type in the search bar ICMP, press enter, and it will only output any ICMP packets that are received right here. So let's give it a try. We type test semicolon, then we added space for the second command, and we typed ping and then the IP address. Now also since Linux systems ping forever until you control C, we also want to add dash C option, which stands for count, and we want to ping only five times. So we were going to type ping IP address, then space dash C, and then five. In case you don't see it really well, let me enlarge this and it looks something like this. Once we submit this request, you will notice that this page is loading consistently. And after a few seconds, we get this output. But if we go to our Wireshark, we also get ICMP packets from the target machine. Now, imagine that we didn't get this output right here. We would think that there was no vulnerability. But if we opened our Wireshark and saw the requests coming in, we would know that we have a case of blind command injection. How cool is that? Okay, awesome. And this was the simple example of command injection. In the next video, we're going to take a look at these tasks right here, even though they don't really have much to do with the command injection, but more like system navigation and something like that. But we're nonetheless going to do them just to show how you can approach these challenges. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture.